The Umbrella Academy's mind and time bending finale pays off multiple plot threads that have been quietly simmering in the background, and drops a ton of new revelations that are going to have major implications moving forward. There is no shortage of material here to unpack and discuss. Perhaps the most cryptic scene of all in the Umbrella Academy season finale comes right at the beginning of the episode. It opens with a flashback, A still living Reginald Hargreaves is confronting a woman who seems to be his lover as she dies of an unnamed illness. Outside, dozens of other worldly spaceships are exiting the atmosphere, indicating that this strange world is experiencing its last moments. Though never directly stated, we can assume from this that Reginald Hargreaves is an alien, something which is also briefly stated in the comics, but never explored deeper. Also, there is one final inexplicable element. Before Reginald leaves his homeworld for Earth, he opens a jar that releases dozens of tiny firefly-like things which fly up into the air and vanish. No explanation is given, but this is undeniably setting up something. All we have now are tinfoil hat theories, like the idea that there were 43 of those fireflies, and these were responsible for the 43 Earth women who gave birth to the superpowered children in the first episode. If this is the case, it could mean that Hargreaves created the children as a way of giving the Earth someone to protect it, as a way of atoning for failing to protect his own homeworld. This is pure speculation, of course, but it would explain why Hargreaves was so interested in adopting as many of these super kids as possible. Once the flashback is over, we're back in the present, where things are not going well for what remains of the Hargreaves family. Vanya has discovered she has the ability to transform ambient sound into deadly force. After getting understandably upset at her family for intentionally or unintentionally belittling her and deceiving her about her powers throughout her entire life, she reflexively lashes out, gravely wounding Allison and killing several others. Up until now, the rest of the team has been trying to figure out what's going to cause the end of the world, but now they realize the source of the apocalypse is going to be Vanya. Vanya. Well, I thought Harold Jenkins was the cause, but he was the fuse. Vanya is the bomb. Vanya causes the apocalypse. You see, Vanya St. Pluvium Chamber Orchestra has a performance later that day in the Icarus Theatre, and with her new sound manipulation powers going out of control, this concert has the potential to end the world. Midway through the episode, a bunch of new assault rifle-wielding baddies in red gas masks show up and start trying to kill our heroes. It's never stated explicitly where they came from or who they're working for, but if you were paying close attention earlier in the season, you should recognize them instantly. In episode 6, those same gas masks are hanging up in the background as the handler is giving number 5 a tour of the Time Travel Enforcement Bureau, known as the Commission. So much like Hazel, Char Char, and the Hit Squad that attacked number 5 at the end of the first episode, the men in gas masks are additional agents and serve to the commission. The late arrival of these masked goons indicate that we possibly haven't seen the full array of the different types of agents and resources that the commission has at its disposal. The level of threat they're going to be sending moving forward will likely just escalate from here. Early in this episode, it seems Hazel might be back to working for the wrong side. The handler tells him and Char Char that if they can protect Vanya until the apocalypse hits, they'll both be forgiven for their previous transgressions. Hazel agrees at first, but on the way to the Icarus Theater, things take a dramatic turn when he purposefully crashes his car in an attempt to kill Char Char and escape the assignment. After leaving Char Char for dead, Hazel returns to the handler's hotel room to free his girlfriend Agnes, but the handler stands in his way. We're expecting another dramatic conversation in which Hazel and the handler debate the merits of their respective worldviews, but Hazel Hazel skips this part and just shoots her in the head. You might think that this means his troubles are over, but when number 5 threatened to do the same thing to the handler in episode 5, she warned, I'll just be replaced. I'm but a small cog in a machine. Even though she acts like the one directing the entire commission, the handler's death would probably only mean things will get worse for our heroes. Fingers crossed we'll finally get a chance to meet the big boss from the comic book, an evil sentient goldfish in a robot body by the name of Carmichael. During the final battle in the Icarus Theater, Klaus exhibits a new power for the first time, channeling the spirit of his dead brother Ben, who appears in the middle of the room in a ghostly blue form. This manifestation of Ben is, however, quite corporeal, as he is able to use the superpowers he had when he was alive to create a mass of super-strong tentacles to tend to kill the squad of commission agents attacking his siblings. Klaus is able to achieve this new level of power because he's managed to stay sober for a while now, which seems to have opened the doors to power beyond just communicating with the dead. If he remains sober into Season 2, we could see Klaus use telekinesis and levitation, a pair of powers he has in the comics, but lacks in the show. It's also likely that Klaus's increased ability to channel Ben into the physical world means that the second season will give us much more of Ben, who will also finally get a chance to interact with other members of the family. 
When Diego confronts Char Char at the Icarus, it looks as though he'll finally be able to have his vengeance over the death of his friend, Detective Eudora Patch. At the end of the fight, however, when Diego has Char Char at his mercy, he ends up sparing her life. If you were confused as to why, this is actually a culmination of his journey throughout the season. Even before he became consumed with his quest for vengeance, Diego was always one of the morally murkier Hargreaves' children. The one thing that always kept him from going off the deep end, however, was his friendship with Patch. When Diego finally gets the chance to kill Cha Cha, he can't help but imagine what Patch would think of him now. He remembers a conversation with Five that he had in Episode 9. Girlfriend Patch. What you like about her? She believed in people. She always saw the good inside. Diego realizes that perhaps there was some good inside Char Char as well, even if she herself hadn't realized it yet. And he decides to leave her alive so maybe she can also get a chance to find it someday. Does this mean that Diego is going to be less broody in the future? Probably not, but it's a start. One of the biggest turning points in the Umbrella Academy Season 1 finale comes when Allison has to decide whether or not Vanya is beyond saving. Up until now, Allison has always advocated attempting to reason with her, but when Vanya is about to kill not just the four Hargreaves boys, but also possibly the entire world, Allison realizes that she might need to be put down for good. In the comics, Vanya actually does get shot in the head at this moment, but it's Five who pulls the trigger, not Allison. The comics version of Vanya ends up surviving the injury, but she's paralyzed and suffers memory loss. In the show, however, Allison opts for another way, placing the gun right beside Vanya's head and firing. The sound that close to Vanya's ear is enough to break her concentration long enough for the Hargreaves boys to escape. Even though she falls unconscious, all the energy Vanya's been gathering up has to go somewhere. As she passes out, an enormous beam of white light erupts out of her chest and flies into space, impacting on the full moon above. Then, as the entire moon starts to glow red hot, it suddenly becomes very clear how the world is supposed to end. As they say, shoot for the moon. As pieces of the moon rain down from the heavens, our heroes only have a few moments to do something to save the world. How do they manage it? Well, they don't. Number 5 makes them all gather together so they can travel back in time to try and prevent the apocalypse at an earlier juncture. I think I have a way out of here. You gotta trust me on this. No, no I don't no, think so. The long-term consequences on Vanya aren't clear, since she passes out immediately and doesn't wake up before the end of the episode. But it's possible she suffered hearing damage. That would certainly make her career as a violinist more difficult, and add an unexpected wrinkle to her character with the ability to control sound. We can assume that very few people survive the end of the world, outside of our main seven heroes. If you can count Ben as surviving, that is. Most of the other named characters were dead already, including Pogo, Mom, Leonard, and the Handler. But what about Hazel and Cha Cha? It's a blink and you'll miss it moment, but a second before the blast hits Hazel and Agnes, they disappear in a flash of blue light. This implies they stole a briefcase, one of the Commission's time travel devices, from the Handler after killing her. We don't know where Hazel and Agnes traveled to, but we can assume we haven't seen the last of them. Cha Cha's fate is far more grim. Despite technically succeeding at her final assignment of keeping Vanya Hargreaves alive, we see that in her final moments, she is trying and failing to contact HQ from a payphone. This could be because, as Hazel predicted, the Commission never intended to rescue them from the apocalypse. Or it could simply be because the handler is dead, and there's no one to receive her call. Either way, we unfortunately have to say ta-ta to Cha-Cha. But since Hazel and Cha-Cha have had long and illustrious careers as time-traveling assassins, it's possible that the Hargreaves will run into these two again at an earlier point in their lives, when the pair were still cold-blooded killers. Nothing can mess with the character art quite like time travel. The old man did say time travel could contaminate the mind. As the Hargreaves are preparing to travel back in time, they appear for a moment to be de-aged back to how they looked as teenagers. Is it possible that this is just supposed to be a cool, artsy way to end the season? A symbolic representation of how the Hargreaves have finally been reunited together as a family, like back when they were children. But it's also possible that this moment is meant to be taken very literally. Remember that Number 5 himself didn't always look 13. He used to be a 58-year-old man, but his age was reset back to 13 as an unintended side effect of the method he used to time travel. If Five is sending his siblings back using the same method, it's possible that they'll be de-aged the same way he was. From what we've seen of Five's struggles with this situation, getting stuck in a body that's the wrong age is not an easy problem to fix. It's been a rough couple of days. 
If it does indeed happen though, then a big conflict for the coming season will probably be the team trying to find a way to return to adulthood. There might be another side effect to this, however, and this more unambiguously positive. Since Ben's ghost is also hitching a ride, if everything about these characters is reversing to how things were when they were teens, it's possible that he might not just be returned to youth, but back to life as well. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the bell so you don't miss a single one.